Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We take a look back here over the last 30 days at the CPC rain gauge data. And again, this goes from the time period of February 8th through March 8th, so a couple of days old here. But it gives us the, the big picture idea. We've had the very, very wet conditions in parts of Mato Grosso and, and eastern Brazil during that time period. We've been a bit drier in pockets in southern Brazil. And then of note has been the dry conditions that we've seen down here, which we've been talking about the last couple of weeks in, in parts of Argentina. Now, one of the big questions is, are we going to see a change to this pattern? So we need to know what we need to change from. So I went back and looked over that same time period at pressure patterns. And what we've noticed is, uh, while we've had a more active monsoonal flow here, we have really missed out on getting a routine uh, set up here where we have regular low pressure systems running in the westerlies down here. So the map you're looking at is pressure anomalies. And due to anomalously high atmospheric pressure, where we typically have our storm track this time of year in this region, uh, it's extended into this part of Argentina and kind of helped keep things on the drier side. Now we can look at a lot of different variables to understand that. And I mentioned these in each video, but I'll just bring you back to one we talk quite a bit about. It's the Antarctic Oscillation, or in Australia they call it the Southern Annular Mode. It's looking at where the jet stream level winds are uh, in its respect to how close they are to the, the pole, or are they expanding much farther here uh, toward the equator. Okay, in a nutshell, we look back here over the month of February and early March, and we saw a lot of positive values of the Antarctic Oscillation. It then dipped recently, and it looking to recover back here briefly positive and then kind of head back down toward neutral conditions. Now what's the point in showing that? Over here on the right, during the month of March, when the Antarctic Oscillation is positive, we have higher pressure anomalies in this area, which would result in warmer conditions and also result uh, in, in drier conditions. So what we're paying attention to is this late, this dip as of late down here, and then how quickly it kind of comes back toward neutral. That's going to be critical to the precipitation pattern. In addition to that, the Southern Oscillation Index, which tells us the pressure difference between Tahiti and Darwin, uh, it is actually crashing pretty hard right now, telling us that this La Nina is losing its its, its strength with its stronger trade winds. And we're going to see a lot of subsidence in the atmosphere in this region, so air generally just sinking higher pressure here. And what that appears to be doing is allows for better upper level motion, rising motion here over much of South America. So to put this all together, I expect in the near term for there to be an increase in the uh, in the storm track uh, here in the westerlies right into this area. And we're going to see that by playing out this animation. So throughout this week, scattered storms in Argentina. We're going to focus here on Argentina going into the weekend. And then what I want you to notice is that by the time we get into about Sunday uh, into Monday, you see this low that's kind of moving down here pretty far to the south. It's going to clip the very southern tip of Argentina and Chile. As it goes through, there's two things that are happening. High pressure cell one here, high pressure cell two there, and here's our low spinning up just like this. Now what it's doing at this point is it's leaving a boundary right in through this area early next week on which we could see quite a bit of showers and thunderstorm activity. And you see that the model early next week, this is on again Tuesday, into Tuesday midday and Tuesday evening. That's going to be what could potentially be round one uh, of showers and storms that could move through Argentina and bring in some much needed rainfall. The monsoon is overall going to be behaving, I, I think, quite normally during this time period here in Brazil. But as we go forward here, this is now getting into next Wednesday and getting out to next Thursday. That low exits, higher pressure builds in. But the model, again, once we get out here pretty far, this is now, I know we're out pretty far in a single model run, so we're going to look at the ensemble in a moment. But it does want to bring in more rainfall at the end of this uh, here. Now, again, you can't trust these single model runs out that far, but I do at least want to show you how the precip then accumulates. So here we are into getting into the day on Sunday. Now getting into Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So you see that there's the first round of precip. Let's step you back here, coming through during this time period. And we're looking here at, you know, 30 to 50 millimeters of rain. So, uh, you know, in inches, this would be an inch to over two inches of rainfall in some places here. Now, these will be coming in as thunderstorms on a, a stalled out kind of almost stationary boundary. Uh, and as a result, we're going to keep an eye on who gets the rain and who does not get the rain. Eastern Brazil is going to be on the drier side of things, but really quite routine rains here from Mato Grosso uh, and Mato Grosso do Sul moving forward. Southern Brazil is a bit drier through the next uh, eight or nine days, though. So I'm calling into question how 
Well, the models have resolved this rainfall from the second round. Remember, we were looking at that. So as a look out there from day four through day 10, we do see that we still favor near average to above average rainfall in this region. And that's been the area that's been quite tricky to forecast over this time period. Now, after that, uh, the models back off again. So you see that the latest update here from the European Ensemble now starts to pull back on the rainfall in, in Argentina's um, you know, northern and eastern uh, growing areas here. Still see more routine and regular rainfall, at least through the third week of March in much of Brazil's growing area, though. Now, from this point forward, I want to stretch out even farther. And let's just look at the 30 days that would be from March 24th through April 23rd. And it's interesting to see how the European model is attempting to go over to a drier pattern. And I, I'll be honest, I'm not quite seeing the connection to tell me why that would happen. In other words, you look out that far and the European model washes out its teleconnections quite a bit. We know we have a, a collapsing La Nina, but would that be giving us that strong of a correlation for a bit of a drier pattern while you see the models are favoring more thunderstorm activity in Argentina. So I, I'm, I'm just going to put a big question mark on this and say that I don't have a lot of confidence moving forward through the month of April with the precip pattern in Argentina. So we're going to have to watch this carefully. Same thing for Brazil. And I'm going to finish with this map just to let you know that the long range European seasonal outlook for April, May and June. So we're thinking about what that Safrina crop is going to be getting here. The models continue to favor, you know, slight dry bias in this area. We'll have to see if that becomes more pronounced with time because it could put some stress on the Safrina crop, which we know is going in quite late. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on this. All right. We'll report back to you again on Monday, give you some new updates, and we'll see how things progress forward. But watching those range in Argentina are going to be probably the more critical piece here moving forward in this forecast. Appreciate your attention. Have a good weekend. Thanks.